All right, so it's Wednesday the 14th of April, and I've recently completed my interview with Pauline Estevez. I think that's her last name. I should double check that. She's an elder with the Timbisha Shoshone people out here in Death Valley, AKA Timbisha. And um, it was a pretty long interview. I felt a little bad, but I think she had more energy than me, this 97 year old woman. Um, she really hit on this powerful note of us not being separate from the land, uh, not needing separate buildings to worship, not of uh, people being inextricably linked. And the idea that those visiting the parks are therefore a look-see, but it's, it's not sinking in. Um, it's, it's transactional. Uh, they are to take something, take an experience, take a memory, but what are you giving? And that was a kind of an interesting way to reframe how all of us see these parks. Plus the history and the pain of having the federal government declare your land uninhabited when your people have been living here for at least a thousand years, probably more. Um, and the stories of the park rangers destroying homes as the longtime residents here left for the summer to head up to the mountains where it was cooler. And it's the bad faithness of that all. Uh, really struck me. She had a, a great sense of humor. Uh, she told this funny story about sort of uh, pranking the, the park rangers back when she was a kid and uh, letting the air out their tires, losing patience with the local representatives of the government and going above their heads to Washington, going beyond the U.S. to uh, Europeans and, and other allies around the world to have their cause better received. And I think she was very honest when she talked about the next generation um, and what comes next. She said she's undecided. So while she is a very strongly opinionated person with a lot of tethering in the past in terms of what's authentic and what's not, she also didn't go so far as to like fully write off people who uh, look for a different way. She just was unsettled about it. And I thought that was a bit of nuance I hope you pick up um, when we put this piece together. Also, it's not that hot. People keep talking, Death Valley is so hot, so hot, so hot. It's fine, I feel fine. I might have been tearing up a bit during the conversation because of the total lack of humidity and my eyes just trying to overproduce to stay lubricated. It was definitely that. <laughs> and maybe from my nose, there, you might've seen some liquid coming out of my nose, depending on how we cut this thing together. Um, I think that's about it. Yeah, I, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful. Oh, and there's one more thing. I said it in the interview, but we got to try to get this in. Um, they used fire hoses to destroy the houses. They, they used fire hoses on the homes of like World War II fighters, you know, soldiers. While they were away, dude comes back and doesn't have a home. That's messed up. And that was in the 40s. And I have, you know, burned into my memory um of, of pictures but maybe genetic memory of like government agents police using fire hoses on black folk standing up for themselves whenever you stand up against the u.s federal government you know they don't play um so it, it makes it all the more remarkable how this tribe got recognized formally got their name on the sign welcoming to the park got thousands of acres back from the government that was not trying to do anything like that. So I know there's still a lot of challenges. I know some of the stuff is unresolved. Maybe it'll never be resolved, but yo, the struggle is real. It continues and uh, there's a lot of alignment and solidarity across groups. Okay, check it out.